down the hammer and pick up the pencil. You're about to listen to the Savvy Radio Show. Learn from real life real estate investors. Experience revealed with the Savvy Landlord as your host. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, foes, whoever, you need to learn this information. I'm super excited. As usual, I get to hang out with a Sudu superstar accountant Sudu. slash Sudu. I don't know what, what Sudu <laughs> means, like somewhat super duper star of accounting slash really true entrepreneur, know how to analyze. A lot of people may or may not remember the last episode where you used to own a retail uh, establishment, which is really cool. And I was going to tell you this before, uh, before we got started, that where I had lunch just a little while ago, if you look on the podcast, I mean, on my, where I checked in at, I met with the owner of this store and, you know, trying to start more businesses, create more businesses, invest in businesses, build businesses with other business owners, especially other entrepreneurs. And this entrepreneur, I'll get him on the radio show, which is incredible. He started this business and he's opened a second store and I see his success. I see his brand and I I think I can contribute somewhere somehow. And so uh, the topic today, if you don't mind, uh, this is not the best topic in the world, but it can be the most rewarding employees um, because you need to duplicate yourself. You can't do everything. You, it's impossible to scale staff, employees, contractors, however you want to label this person. There is some accounting issues with this legality issues with this. So I'd rather have you explain the details of employees. We could talk about some banter when we first started uh, our accounting firm where I was like, no employees. <laughs> like, <laughs> And you got really frustrated with me for about two seconds. And then I relented um, because, you know, you can't run a business properly if you start trying to manipulate the law for your benefit. So let's go into And then we'll go into when should I hire an employee and all that other fun stuff. But let's talk about employees. What's your take on employees? When should I hire an employee? What, what, What comes to your mind with the word employee? Well, like you said, duplicating yourself. Um, yeah, when, when you're at capacity and you realize like when you really truly realize where your time is best spent, that's probably when you need to be looking at making uh, a move towards an employee. But, um, when, but when do you jump to that point where like you have a successful business that's based on contractors, but when does, when do you draw the line and say, okay, is it when I want to control this person? I mean, is there, is there, well, that's thing? where you get into the legalities of it, you know, um, and we could jump right in, but you know, this, um, contractors, you know, they, they set their own schedule. And the, there's a, a whole list of things that the state looks at of what determines a contractor or employee. But one of them is, yeah, setting your own schedule. Um, do, they, do they already know how to do the job? Like, do they already have the skills to do that job? Are you providing them with equipment to do that job? Um, are you telling them when to show up? There's- When you, when you mean by providing um, the tools, could that be a cell phone? Yeah. Okay. If they need Listen, it for the job. This is not the most fun subject for me. So let's okay, just get I feel down. Like, let's, no, you're making it not fun. <laughs> let's, let's just get down and dirty. The one time, I don't know if you remember this, a couple of years ago, I got a letter from unemployment. Yeah. And I was very upset to the degree mm-hmm. of about to go crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and just so you know, ladies and gents, I'm not a super fan of employees. I love employees only if the business really functions with that employee. But let and me tell you what. Of- a lot of it depends on the industry, like the accounting firm. Absolutely. We have employees because we're telling them what to do. Well, and that's the nature of that, of that industry, like the, the skill set of people that we are attracting and hiring, they are employees. Okay. So let me give you this one example. So I was running a real estate company, a construction company, and this, I need, someone asked me for a job and I love people. And so I was like, listen, I need you to go sweep these houses after the construction job. So the guy, he actually had a BMW. He was, he wanted $10 an hour. He had his own tools. He had a a broom and a shovel and a back of his little BMW. I'm not joking. Now, I can't believe this guy was driving a BMW, but that's, that's for another episode. But so he gets the job 
and he does a terrible job. Seriously. Like he goes to the job where like, Hey, go to this address and sweep this. And whenever it's convenient for you, when I did my pre hiring, I verified that he was a contractor. Did he have a business card? Check. Does he have his own transportation? Check. He had his own shovel in broom. Check, check, check. He wanted a job. No big deal. I'm thinking to myself as an entrepreneur, I'm protected here. I'm just giving him an address. You go clean it. Well, anyway, the guy does a terrible job. He quits or something or we fire him. I'm not really sure how it goes down, but obviously he wasn't good. Next thing you know, I get a letter from the government stating that I, he, I laid him off. I have to pay unemployment. Mm -hmm. I was extremely irate. I actually have it documented where he signed my contractor form, which we can get that in on our membership slash group coming up soon. But I have a very detailed check the box. You are a contractor. You have your own bank account. You have your own EIN number. Let's be clear. You are a contractor, but Mm -hmm. I still got hammered. And I had to pay a fine of 200 and something dollars. What went wrong there? No. Okay. First of all, so I'm assuming since you had him sign your contractor contract, <laughs> you also got a W-9. Um, I don't remember, but probably. Yeah. So that's one of the first things I always say is before you pay anybody, this is rule number one, get a, get a W-9. That outlines or that has them sign off. This is my social security number and this is my address. Um. The next thing would be, and sometimes some, I see that this letter pop up a lot, not a lot, but it does, does pop up. Um, and that's usually what opens up a can of worms too, is the state says this person saying, oh, I want to go file unemployment. They got, I got fired or I got laid off or, um, well, then the state says, well, I don't have any record of this, this employee. Right. And that's what, that's the letter that you got. Um, but now, then I- I tried to give them the paperwork. I tried to explain to them that I had no, they just stiffed on me and said, no, this is how it is. Well, it doesn't always work like that. You kind of sometimes with the state and any government agencies, you kind of have to be the squeaky wheel. <laughs> I mean, if, if you signed, if he signed a W-9 and you have that agreement, um, it sounds to me like he was a contractor. Right. Um, now there are cases that do come up where um, it, it sparks a unemployment law issue um, where they want to do a labor audit. Mm. So that happens where now they're asking for all your payroll records, your and your contractor records to say, okay, are these people truly contractors? Cause you're paying them as contractors, but then they'll go so far as to say, okay, well, do you have copies of their general liability insurance? Do you have copies of their business cards? Are they operating as a business? Right. And that's, and that's where people really get stung. And I think that's the the nature of this podcast today is to really outline, Rose, if you can, the nuances of having an employee versus a contractor, right? That's our title of our podcast. Yeah. And you just hit on something that's extremely powerful. That that could trigger you into a massive labor dispute, which you would yeah. have to convert all those general contractors or contractors to employees and pay yeah. back all that tax or, you know, it's the, it's the unemployment unemployment tax, tax but also a uh, workman's comp as well. If in my world, you know, so yeah. that's why, that's why I don't like employees just. <laughs> okay. Well, there, there's right, there's right and wrong ways to do things. So with the contractors. And, and the reason I thought this would be good in, for this podcast is because uh, we deal with a lot of real estate investors. And in that industry, we are dealing with a lot of contractors. Um, and these are true contractors. So like I said, mentioned previously, get a W-9. I made this mistake myself last year. I was doing a rehab <laughs> and I did not take my own advice and get a W-9 before I paid the dude. Sometimes that's the hardest um, thing to grasp because, you know, you got a lot of different wheels turning. You got things going on with your project and you just don't think about it. But I'm never going to talk to that person ever again. I'm not going to ever get their information. And so that makes it a challenge when issuing them a 1099 at the end of the year. 
So yeah, once you explain what a W-9 does and how it helps you as a, an investor or uh, a, pay, a payer person. A W-9 is just a document you know, that they have to fill out. They are in their social security number. That, num- that form does not get filed with the IRS. It's for your records. Um, at the end of the year, you are supposed to be issuing 1099s to your contractors, uh, to your attorneys, to anyone that you pay rent to. So there's a lot of nuances with that if it's more than $600. Now, a lot of um, accountants and even IRS auditors will say that if you don't issue 1099s and that cost is not deductible. Um, That's not necessarily true. It's just a heck of a lot harder to prove that cost (laughs) if you do not issue a 1099. Okay, hold up. Wait a minute. Hit the brakes. You said (laughs) that you have to... For paying rent, so you're talking about the landlord should give. Walk me through that. You just said that. So, we're, we're, like, if I pay someone rent for my office, I should be sending the landlord a 1099. So they, so they're they record it properly. It's just right. an it's integrity yeah. issue, right? Yeah, so. and so like our clients that collect rent income, they get a lot of 1099s at the end of the year for, and it's in box one. It says rent income. There's also another box that says attorneys, attorney fees. There's a box that says, um, I think it says non-employee compensation. So those are the three main box on the, uh, boxes on that 1099 form. Um, the other question that I often get is, do we have to issue 1099s for people that we pay using Cash App or PayPal or anything like that? The answer is no, you don't because that third party is responsible for sending out those 1099s. Um, but that's probably not an ideal way to pay your people. I just, I just got excited. <laughs> no, I, because I, I just got excited. And here's why. What name is your PayPal account in? Uh, me personally, me, but I can open right. it. <laughs> so, we don't want that. Send the me the thing, money. The other thing to stop doing is pulling cash out of your ATM to pay your contractors. <laughs> That's, lo- that's, that's a, ludicrous. That, that's a surefire way to, okay, now you definitely can't do a 1099. You're not going to be able to prove it at an audit and it's going to make your accountant go crazy. <laughs> well, can you, can you prove it with a withdrawal receipt from the ATM machine? But that doesn't tell you anything. Right. It tells you to cash out. <laughs> it's interesting on the cash app. I didn't realize that you could do it that way. Um maybe for like day labor or short, short term scenario or not at all. Yeah, we want to, we want to try to get all those deductions that we can. So, um, you know, do a check or if they send you a, um, an invoice electronically, that way it goes to your bank. That's ideal, but not cash. All right. Um, let's get back to this employee versus contractor. How right. do I, how does someone protect themselves? And is there a way not to pay unemployment or social security. I mean, these are, you know, 7.5% tax on top of what the, well, poor... and this is when I start to say, okay, well, welcome to the big boy club. <laughs> you know, people talk like, well, we're hiring. Are you hiring an employee or a contractor? If you're hiring contractors, quit calling them employees, quit calling them payroll, quit saying they're on salary. These are all employment terms. Right. Can you run that uh, contractor through your payroll as a 1099? I mean, no, (laughs) if it's, if it's an employee, then they get paid, uh, you know, pay stubs that break out their, their um, gross pay and their taxes. The Um, social security. Yeah. The social security, Medicare. Um, You also have to set up your withholding accounts depending on your state. So like we're in Oklahoma. So we have a with, um, withholding accounts for those states. We also, like me personally, I have employees out of state, so I have to set up withholding accounts for those other states. Um, <laughs> oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. So, so if you have a staff member in, a, say, Atlanta, mm-hmm. you have to have, open up an account just to hold their withholding in that account. So it's another right. bank account that you have to manage. Not, not a bank account. So when I say withholding account, that's with their state agency. Okay. So in Oklahoma, we have Oklahoma Tax Commission. So um, you're t- so you're telling me if I have to pay somebody X amount of money and then they're withholding, I send it to that account too, and they basically escrow their money for them. Yeah. 
yeah. as a state staff. Mm-hmm. And if they qualify to receive that money back with deductions, if not, they keep this state. Exactly. Income. And that's just for them to file on their personal tax returns. Any withholding is their money. Sure. It's just prepaying their tax. And like in Texas, they don't pay employee. I mean, in, right. Income. Texas tax. doesn't have withholding. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And and that's why every state is different. Like I'm not an HR expert, but <laughs> I do know about payroll taxes. Um, get it. You definitely need an EIN, which if you're in business, you probably already have one, but EIN stand, stands for employer identification number. Um, workers compensate comp insurance is a big one. It's not really not that expensive depending on your industry. Um, sorry. Uh, again, setting up a payroll system. So that's either using um, a third party payroll or your um, accountant if they offer payroll. That way, I mean, there are ways to do payroll manually, but if you don't know what you're doing with payroll, it's just so much easier to outsource it. So what's the total cost? I'm a small real estate investor. I'm up to 40 units and I want to hire people to run my property management for me. I'm tired. I'm burned out. What cost. So right now you're telling me I have a software cost or an accounting cost, Mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to do payroll, which is their social security and Medicare. Yeah. You're going to match it. Yeah. Right. So usually what I just do rough and dirty estimate is I say it's going to, that is going to cost you 10% of their pay. So if I'm going to pay them $15 an hour, I have to allocate $16, $17. 17. Yeah. Or 20. Yeah. Um, and that covers your employer portion of their social security and, um, Medicare. And it also covers some of their unemployment if your state has that and workers comp. So that's just, um, a a quick estimate. And then of course you're going to, like I, like you said, you're going to have administrative costs. If you're not doing your own payroll, there are sometimes monthly returns you have to file, definitely quarterly returns you have to file and then year end. So, Per yeah, employee. I, I, yeah. Well, no, for, for your company, for the company. Yeah. So, so I get why a lot of people are anti payroll, but really it's, you know, if you're, if you have people on staff that are, um, that at least think they're employees, you're not doing them any favors by not paying them. Is well. there a liability? Um, you know, I, you know, I've hired a few people in my lifetime. <clears throat> Some people are very adamant. I don't want to be a W2 employee, mm-hmm. you know, and I understand that verbiage and that language and that work ethic. Mm-hmm. And then there's some people that just want to be an employee. What, what's the nuances is one greater than the other. It's just more of ma- more work as a regular employee. I, as well, I, I think, hear. you know, someone that is, if they just get contract work, they themselves need to be diligent about setting aside their self-employment tax. You know, that's, that's just as much as the employee employer tax. Um, hmm. So, I mean, that's 15.3% on self, self-employment tax. So you, you, you've been, you're very comfortable with this subject and I'm, I'm, I'm shaking in my boots over here. Cause um, I just, I guess maybe cause I'm not a detailed person and there just seems like there's so many steps to doing this. Okay. So I got to make sure I got them the W2 form filled out. Then I have to set up a separate account for this individual. Then I have to pay monthly or quarterly or weekly their contribution that I have to match per se. Then they have to get a payroll stub. Then if I do this at all wrong, I can have jail time. No, not jail. Well, I mean, (laughs) But I mean, I've heard, I've heard horror stories like, you know, somebody didn't. That's one of the things is the IRS is very unforgiving with payroll tax. Like they, if you miss your um, payroll tax deposits or you underpay, you're overpay, you're going to get a letter, letter very quickly. Um, You know, I've had clients that are, they withheld pay. This, this has happened. This, you hear about this. They withheld the taxes from their employer employees and they didn't remit it. That's a big deal. So that's basically you're stealing which, from your employees. Which you can technically get shut down. It's almost like you oh, tax yeah. eva- it's tax evasion, right? I mean, Absolutely. In, in a nutshell. Yeah. And but then, that's where it comes into play. Like you really, 
you have to be managing your cash flow too, because you you're holding those funds in escrow and then you're paying them to the state or the, to the feds monthly or quarterly, depending well, on me, the amount. Well, me personally, it's just like taking someone's deposit. It's their money. Mm-hmm. And I'm required by fiduciary that, to give an, uh, an account for this money that that is rightfully theirs. This is right. just in case they do damage. Right. But it's not, you know, it's really not. Once you get on a good system, it's not that big of a deal. It's just, you know, well, I just think this. I just think a lot of people don't know this. And I know for me, starting as a young entrepreneur, hey, I, I didn't think I could afford it. Two, I didn't want to learn something new that really didn't benefit me. This is more of a governmental sure. control. And it was just me so elusive. Just, okay, hey, you're 1099. Uh, you know, do you do you do this for other right. investors? And I just, I just write one check. It's just so attractive just to do it that way. <clears throat> but there is a gray line. What is that line that people tend to step over that you've seen? And most of the people that listen here are real estate investors and some, and some, entrepreneurs, but is there like a, you can't cross this line. We know for sure this is wrong. Um, I mean, definitely paying under the table is wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, what does that mean exactly? Like if I got $200, say, man, cut, cut my grass, here's 200 bucks. Meaning here's a good example. A tenant gives you $300 cash for their rent. And you take that three hundred dollars and pay a contractor. Oh, it's never recorded. Never recorded, hmm. and that's you know that's not ideal. Um, <laughs> that's not. <laughs> well, my mind starts spinning. I'm like, that's a really good idea, Rose. Like, you know, I was like, <laughs> and then my my mind was like, who 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 monitors what? your books? I mean, think about it logically. Like, if you there's a lot of there's still old school tenants out uh, landlords out there that only do cash only. And does the government know what they're recording? That's where you started out with you as a tenant should serve that landlord a 1099. Well, no, 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 not the tenant because they're not paying you rent for a business. Oh, it's only for businesses. It's for business. Like I pay rent. Hmm. So that's for, because I'm deducting that rent as an expense. That's a business. Um, but yeah. like, if you get, if you get section eight payments, you get 1099s from section eight for all yeah. that rent. Absolutely. Um, I just think that, you know, do things, right. do things the right way, because <laughs> sometimes that can come up and bite you. You know, you may have a great relationship with your property manager, um, that you're paying as a contractor, but you never know when things can change and that person doesn't owe you anything. You don't owe them anything. Um, and if you, you know, telling them when to show up in the office, you're, they have a set schedule of Monday through Friday from eight to blah, blah, blah. That sounds like an employee. The other nice thing about having employees is you can set clear expectations and guidelines and um, for them to follow. And if they don't, then you, then you have more grounds for termination too. And there's no issues. Yeah, but that's why I get real frustrated is like, then they don't do their job. Then I fire this individual, and then this individual starts collecting unemployment. What? Well, I take all the risks. That's why you do. But who else takes them? We're in business for a reason. I know. I just get frustrated. <laughs> yeah, um, but that you know that's why all employers pay into that unemployment. Um, right, and that's and, th- and there's some people that genuinely need unemployment, right? I mean, this whole. Well, let me just say also, you know, with COVID and everything the last year, I have seen an absurd amount of fraudulent unemployment claims. Um, I got some from, from my business. Um, what, what do you mean? Clients have had some, meaning I get a notice saying, hey, pay, this person has filed unemployment and they were never an employee, never a record of them. So because of COVID and everyone was filing for unemployment, the, the fraud numbers just increased. So what I, and my point to this is check your mailbox <laughs> because you only have X amount of days to respond to that notice. Okay. And if you don't respond and the state is like, oh, okay, well, we're going to proceed with co- collecting our unemployment tax on this. Okay. I mean, that's a very good, Hey, that's a, you're a pretty good accountant. That's a pretty good tip. Uh, you know, I got something randomly fraudulent just like 30 minutes ago. I checked my email and 
a credit card process went through. I don't recognize the the last four digits. I recognize the software, but I canceled that software. Mm-hmm. I thought it was very interesting how I got this email that said, your service is canceled. Here's your refund. Here's mm-hmm. your four digits of your credit card number. Mm-hmm. But I don't recognize that number. It was very interesting. And I, I have to dig into it actually. Yeah. All right. What are the words of wisdom? Well, this is such a drab subject. Employees I mean, versus contractors. Sorry, it's not, it's not sexy. <laughs> no. What else? What other tips? Um, so, so as a real estate investor, we need to really do our due diligence when hiring someone, making sure that. Um, yeah. The other thing I was going to say is because this comes up to, it's okay. They don't have a social. They're illegal okay. is what you're trying to tell me. Yeah. Okay. So your due diligence is still collecting that document, that W-9. Yeah, I've heard so many um, weird things like, what if the social social security number doesn't file? What does it match? Does so, why I'm still responsible? And, and, and we get those every year. Those are called B notices from the IRS. And that says, hey, we got this 1099. Good job filling that out. But we this this name does not match this social. So sometimes it could just be a clerical error, last name. They didn't add a junior or whatever. Um, so if you're still using that contractor, you need to go back and say, hey, I need a correct W-9 from you. Mm. Um, if they don't provide that, then you start have to withhold twenty eight percent tax from their pay. And if they're still wor- if they're still working, if for they're you. still working, if you get this notice B, interesting. Well, I, I do that even if they don't want to give me a W nine. For I wouldn't even work with them or say, okay, well, I have to withhold twenty eight percent and submit that to the IRS. I mean. Yeah, I, yeah. I get that a lot of people um, are trying to save a few bucks, but um, there's a lot of reliable contract. Well, what, what, what happens to, yeah, what happens to the real estate investor or the business owner that they're, that doesn't like, they didn't, they didn't get a W-9 and oh, did they pay the tax at the end of the year for that amount of money? How does that work as, as a, no, as you as a tax I mean, account? they'll, they'll still, so the correct thing to do would be to still file a, a 1099 on that person. Don't put in their information. Um, you're probably going to get a notice. You could be penalized for filing a, um, an incomplete 1099. Well, is that a fee? Yeah. Like 50 bucks. Damn. Um, you, but if the IRS, there's also penalties if you knowingly do not file 1099, 1099s too. Those are things that would come up like at an audit. Um, but yeah. I, once you, once you, if you, that's why I said, if you're still using that contractor, your, your job is to withhold that 28% and then you remit that to the IRS. So the holy grail here is make sure you have a 1099 that's viable. And if you file it that year, it comes back, doesn't w- come back, you're good to go. Viable. Yeah. 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 But other than that, you could really get yourself into a tiffy with someone. Yeah, and and the, when you when your accountant does your tax return too, there's a question on there that says, were they supposed to file any China into any 1099s? And you say, yes, the accountant says yes or no. And then it says, did they file them? Yes or no. Yes or no. <laughs> right. So, so this is like a handicap form. I mean, like you can't like, they're just verifying. Even if you read the document, what's going on here? Like, to protect the IRS from suing? I mean, I well, the ever, you know, we want to make sure that everyone's recording income. They go back and match those 1099s. And that's the, that's the other step is, okay, you got a 1099. You didn't record the income. That's a problem. So it all, it all works. It, it all falls yeah, The government takes eventually. money from you. The government take a long time <laughs> to do it. The government <laughs> takes their money regardless, or they're going to record it, that it's owed by someone, somewhere, somehow, la da 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 All right. So I, we're pretty much done with this. Um, yeah. Was that, was that exciting? Yeah, that was, uh, I'm, I'm burned out, tired and, uh, you know, whatever. But um, anyway, I appreciate you uh, taking the hard questions and uh, many more questions to come. Thank you for your time, Rose. All right. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivating episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. Connect on Twitter at LandlordBook and always be buying assets.